Whoa, to the top of uh, Marchalin's head. Put Marchalin on the canvas. Poor baby. Poor baby. <laughs> Double knee lift by Manello. Well, George, I don't know. You know, I sometimes wonder why one wrestler, uh, there, there you see the doctor. Thoroughly ensconced in a trance with what he's doing right now, flying Mary by Bonello. Whoa, a knee into the back by Bonello. Bonello, No, and uh, things that you're getting a little nervous, eh, Bonello? Elbow smash to the top of Marjolin's head by Bonello. Referee, by the way, is Wayne Cashman. One of the fine wrestling referees around. Benello has that hold locked on pretty well there. Oh, it's the type of hold you can't do too much with. True. Mm -hmm. But it does punish. Okay, it, yes, but it's not a submission. And it's certainly a feature. Well, there's a good body slam and a leg drop. Benello covering one, two, Whoa, two and a half. I thought we had the first fall scored on this As show. As a matter of fact, the announcer Dave Mariani was on the to the ring. That's right. But now picking Marshall up and was laying him out one more time. Got Marshall now against the ropes. He's going to whip him. He does across the ring. Whoa, a good judo chop. But now going after Graham. And Cecil will be... Dr. Graham on the outside of the ring taking pictures still. Bonello throws that solid right hand punch in the judo chop. And the little lumberjack's on the canvas on his back once again for a count of two. Kicks out. One face lock by Bonello. He's got it wrapped on very tightly. You know, I just realized something. The young people out there wouldn't remember Cecil B. DeMere. That's true. Peter Bogdanovich or somebody. Or uh, what is the... Francis Ford Cobbler? No, 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 the one that does the uh, extraterrestrial things. Oh, Spielberg. Yeah. Six minutes remaining in this now opening match, which is, as usual, a 10-minute time limit. Well, Marshall then has come back, George. You know, he's a game, game little competitor. Doesn't, not the biggest man in the world, but he's got a big heart. Side headlock taken now by Marshallman. Good move by Manello. Reverse backdrop. Backing Marshall against the ropes. Whips him across. Flying tackle right in the center of the ring. The cover. One, two. The count of three goes. And there you have it. John Manello, the winner of this opening match. Here's Dave Mariani to give it to his official. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the ball of the match, John Manello. Here comes Bonello by a three. He gets through screaming with Graham. Graham is taking pictures, and uh, John is making his way over here. John, sit in here with us. It takes an intelligent man to scout the opposition. Now I've got. Do I got to put up with this? I got file footage on you, Bonello. I got you better file footage to you better watch that, pal. You better watch that. Watch that. Sit down. I'm going to get you one more time. As a matter of fact, I'm going to keep on going after you until finally there's nobody to help you. Well, you've got to earn Nobody. You have to earn a match. All right. Bonello. You're just another. Um, I get excited because I noticed something while he was taking all those pictures. He had the camera upside down, so. Don't have to get worried about that. What do I got to put up with this kind of stuff, George? John, they're all after you, you know that? Well, what's it going to take? What do I got to do? Put a cage around a ring and take me one at a time? A couple of weeks ago, you were double-crossed by Chris Carter. That's right. And lately, uh, something happened when Carter walked out there and handed an implement to your opponent. Carter has now? bit off more than he could chew. All right? Because I don't care who it is. All right? One-on-one. -on -one. An honest match, all right? I can give anybody one damn good fight. And Carter cannot match me, all right? I could beat him any time, any place, all right? I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what it's going to take of how to keep everybody away from around that ring, all right? But I'm going to get the match that I want where nobody's around that ring. You're going to have to do something with Bobo. You're going to have to get somebody to watch your back while, uh, while you're out there wrestling. I can get all... I can get all my friends to watch my back, Inclu including the crowd. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to stand around that ring 
with their backs to that ring so that nobody else is coming that ring. You know, that's a darn good idea. You did I never right. thought about that. You get about 60 of the wrestling fans to stand around the ring with clubs or something. Yeah, and let's see a wrestler try and pass through that, those fans. There you go. Right? from John Bonnell a little later. Stay with us. We will be back with more action after this message. On your Christmas list, have you got someone hard to please? Mm. Then here's a tasty solution. To Forbes! The Keg Gift Pack. Just buy any Keg gift certificate of $10 or more and we'll box it free with two free Keg tumblers. <laughs> so this year, tap the Keg. Because when you give a Keg gift certificate, you're really giving someone the start of a great Keg party. Here's <laughs> How much milk do you think went into this one block of Kraft mozzarella? Go on, take a guess. In fact, it takes the equivalent of 20 glasses of good fresh milk to make this one block of Kraft mozzarella. Fresh milk, fresh cheese. No wonder Kraft makes Canada's best-loved mozzarella. No wonder. Don't miss the action. Stampede Wrestling is back Monday, November 21st in the PNE Agrodome. The double main event pits Bad News Allen against Big Jim Morris, followed by a tag team match with Davey Boy Smith and Bret Hart out to get stomp for Goldie and Kerry Brown. Plus Jeff Goldie versus Mr. Hito, Sonny Two Rivers up against Crusher Kamura, and Keith Hart out to get the Cuban assassin. Stampede Wrestling, Monday, November 21st in the PNE Agrodome at 8 p.m. For tickets and reservations, call 687-4444. Be there. Binoculars, Pepsi Challenge booth, and I'm looking for the Coke drinker the Pepsi guys never show on TV. He's tasting, he's smiling, he picked Coke. Now, are we ever going to see this on TV? Ha! No kidding. The truth is, year after year, people drink more Coke than Pepsi. That's fact. Big taste, big refreshment. Let the other guys play the games. You know the score. Coke is there. Coke is there. Don't kill him. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Hailing from Benton Harbor, Michigan, at 306 pounds, Bobo Brazil. <laughs> ben Patrick. Well, wrestling fans, the great Bobo Brazil here on Superstars of Wrestling today, the United States heavyweight champion. Tangling with a young fellow, first appearance here on Superstars of Wrestling, Ben Patrick. And uh, we've said all along that this is the best kind of a test for a young wrestler. Get in there against a man with the experience. And there aren't too many wrestlers, George, that have more experience than the great Bobo Brazil. One of the great veterans of the ring wars, this man. He's, George has been a great wrestler over the last 20 years that Bobo has not wrestled. Now, Bobo has met not only the, the best in our business, he's also traveled all over the world and met the best every place. Not only, I should have sitting down in North America all over. Well, that's what I'm saying, all around the world. This, this man is known and highly revered, really, everywhere in the world. And he is the United States heavyweight champion. Uh, certainly there are pretenders to the throne and there are challengers, George. And uh, King Moondog certainly would have to be at the forefront of that list of challenges, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. One tough man, that King Moondog. A minute gone in this match. George, he's got a... It, it's almost a front face lock that Bobo has applied it right is, now. It's, it's not a choke, it's across the face. Yeah, I was going to say that he had the, his hands wrapped around really the jaw of, of his opponent. Bobo whipped him into the corner, now follows him. There's the Coco Bar. That's the whole George, invented by Bobo Brazil and made famous. Very quickly, the count of three after the Coco Bar and Top Strick. Here's Dave Mariani to report it to us officially. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the fall in the match, Bobo Brazil! <laughs> Last time we wrestled at the Cobo Arena after Bobo Brazil's match, 
he asked for me to come out to the ring and um, let's give this to Bob. And when I went out to the ring, Bob Brazil said something to me that I was not very happy to hear. And that was uh, that if you did not get an impartial referee who had wrestling experience, you would never come back and wrestle in the Cobo Arena again. And then you asked me to be the referee in the next match that you have with Moondog White. And I was so touched by that, Bobo, that you would feel that strongly that you would not come back to Detroit, that I had to agree. And I, do, I don't want to get into the ring anymore. I, I have a lot of problems with knees and everything else, but I'm going to do that. I am going well, to be you know, a special time, referee. At the time, I said I'd never come back to Detroit anymore if I'd get a rematch with White. At that time, I was pretty angry. Yes, I knew that, yes. But now I'm all over that, so I want to say I'm sorry to the fans in Detroit and around the circuit. I'm sorry about that because the Motor City is my hometown. And I love wrestling in Detroit. I have many, many fans there. And I know they come and back me 100%. I don't care who I'm wrestling. But the way I felt at the time, George, that's the way I felt. I was pretty warm. I know I don't have nothing against the referees because I know they are doing their best in the rain. But when you're wrestling a guy like Sailor White, you got to have a wrestler as a referee. And I've been knowing you for quite some time. We've been all over the world together. And I think you are one of the greatest wrestlers. And that's why I ask you to be my referee. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more about this a little later. Stay with us. Slip a little magic into midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Hailing from Louisville, Kentucky, weighing in at 236 pounds, Billy Joe Smith. His opponent now approaching the ring, hailing from East St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 262 pounds, Billy Cool Guy Jackson. George, the soul man, the cool cat from East St. Louis, Billy Jackson. Well, George, it's a good training mechanism. Billy's having too good a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the referee Cashman trying to get him in the ring for you fans at home who can't hear it. Uh, the fans are telling the referee, let him do it. He's dancing. He's warming up. And then he is a soul man. You know, there's something funny. <laughs> it wouldn't be funny for Jackson, but... Oh, God, I won't even say what I'm thinking about what happened to him. Well, you know, Georgie is a soul man. He's the, he is the cool captain. He's St. Louis, Billy Jackson. It's beautiful He's radio, one, isn't it? It is, and he is one rough and tumble customer in the ring. You, you heard the music, and you just saw the move. Georgie floats like a butterfly, and he does sting like a bee in there, doesn't he? But his name isn't Muhammad Ali. No, it's not. It's Billy Jackson from East St. Louis. And he is one fine mess. Look at that. I guess that music did warm him up, George. Sure looks like it. <laughs> His opponent, Billy Joe Smith, asked the referee Cashman to check uh, Billy Jackson's hair for some grease or something and enabled him to slip that uh, headlock. Whoa, punch to the head, but that doesn't have too much effect on the cool cat, George, because he is, like the big bubble of the show, a proponent of the Cocoa Bond. 
side headlock taken again. Oh, well, you know, anybody, I say, oh, because I know what that yeah. punch of the head would do to me. But it just doesn't have that effect to the cool cat. There he is, Billy Jackson, the cool cat, stalking his opponent. There's his punch to the top of the head, and Billy Joe Smith reeling just a little bit. The cool cat now got him up top. He's going to slam up. Body slam down on that canvas. Billy Jackson moving in now on his opponent. There he is right on top of him. Billy Joe Smith is going to whip him across the ring. He does. Smith off the ropes. Oh, a good elbow. Puts the Billy Joe Smith down. Okay. Another newcomer here to Superstars of Wrestling is Billy Joe Smith, and he's spent a lot of time on the canvas today, George. Billy Joe Smith. Here's Dick Mariani. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the fall of the match, Billy Cool Cat Jackson. Here he comes, Billy Cool Cat Jackson. Somebody stole your radio, Billy. <laughs> That's real neat. When did you start uh, doing this? Oh, two weeks ago, some of the kids from the back home, they bought me that radio. Is that right? Yeah, from the project. Some of your fans? Some of my fans. They got together and they both said, that's a beautiful radio, my goodness. I'm and proud of those kids from the project. Uh, and now, now you put your tape on and you come into the ring and uh, that gets you motivated, right? It sure it does. It just warms my motor right up. <laughs> Billy, we have a little problem. <laughs> I say a little problem because not a lot of wrestlers want to get in the ring with you. I can understand that. And uh, what we're trying to do, and we want to tell you wrestling fans this, is that for the next Kobo show, Kobo Arena show on July the 17th, we are talking to four different people about coming in to wrestle Billy the Cool Cat Jackson. One is Abdullah the Butcher. We talked to Abdullah, and Abdullah doesn't want any part of Billy Jackson, but we've got him to the point where we're going to give him enough money he might come in, but he certainly doesn't want him. Next, we're talking to Hulk Hogan, who is one of the stars of Rocky III. Thunderlips. Thunderlips, right. And uh, quite honestly, Hogan has, uh, when he said, Billy Jackson, well, I think I'm busy that day, but I'll let you know. Another is Johnny Valiant, who is also a very good performer. Valiant said, if, uh, if Hogan and, uh, and Abdullah didn't want to get in with, him with you, he would, but he didn't say when. And uh, we're, we have, we're talking to a fourth party. So right now it's up in the air. We really don't have an opponent for you, but we're trying to get somebody real strong. Makes no difference who it is. I love the competition, George. But your reputation has gone around now, Billy, and it's very hard to get good opponents for this man, let me tell you, wrestling fans. But we're really going to try for the next Cobra show. We will be back after this message with more action. <laughs> The Agridome. The double main event pits Bad News Allen against Big Jim Morris, followed by a tag team match with Davey Boy Smith and Bret Hart out to get stomp for Gouldy and Kerry Brown. Plus Jeff Goldie versus Mr. Hito, Sonny Two Rivers up against Crusher Kamura, and Keith Hart out to get the Cuban assassin. Stampede Wrestling, Monday, November 21st in the PNE Agridome at 8 p.m. For tickets and reservations, call 687 4444. Be there. If the wrestling fans, this match is one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Hailing from North Bay, Ontario, weighing in at 231 pounds, Chris Jones. His opponent from St. John's, Newfoundland, weighing in at 360 pounds, Moon Dog. Well, call him Sailor White, call him King Moon Dog. He's still crude, rude, and ignorant, George. That he is, buddy. But he is one awful tough customer. Yes, he is. Yes, you got to give him that. You cannot take that away. You know, um, you you can't agree with the with the wrestling tactics that the man employs in the ring. We just saw what he did to Chris Jones. Jones trying to fight back. You can't agree with the way uh, King Moondog wrestles. George. He doesn't apply any scientific rules yet. Professional wrestling is, is a business, and professional wrestlers are in that business to make money and to make big money, and the winners make the biggest money, and White King Moon Dog is a winning wrestler, George. He has a tremendous one-loss record, and uh, that's what puts him in main events all over the world, and that's why he's not going to change his style, and uh, it's as simple as that. 
Well, I know that even Billy Brazil said to me, you know, he said, I don't, I don't like the men, I don't like the way he wrestles, but I got to tell you this, George, that he has to be the toughest, meanest, vicious type wrestler that I've ever come across in my life. Well, George, that was what he just did to Chris Jones, picking up and dropping him, and he, I, I thought he was going to do it again, but where he dropped him was thrown across that top rope. That, I mean, that's a very, very dangerous maneuver. Forget about winning a match. You can injure an opponent very, very seriously doing that. Look, a backbreaker, and Jones is on the canvas, and, and Moondog's now on the second rope. He's going to do a flying giant splash on that second rope. George, I shudder to think. The count of three goes in. It was obvious. I shudder to think what could happen to someone who saw the bad move. Here's Dave Mariani. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the ball, the match, King Moondog. And he got the audacity. Didn't think I know big words like that, did you? No. He got the audacity to ask me for another match after me beating him, and he's stealing the bug on me, and he wants to clutch me a flip as his personal referee. One Bobo Brazil. Brazil. I got tricked into this match. But I'm telling you, Bobo, don't ever turn your back on me because I'm going to get you. And there's another thing I got to tell you, Mr. Flip. You know where I'm living now, don't you, Blimp? You know where I'm living now, don't you? I have heard that you're uh, living in Windsor now. I am no longer from Newfoundland. No I am no longer from Newfoundland. Nobody's going to call me a goofy newbie anymore. The king of Newfoundland, I am one of the smartest newbies in the world today. I got out. Tell the people where I'm living now, Blimp. I heard you're living in Windsor. That's right, I'm living in Windsor. I also heard that you're driving up and down my street. I got the way, haven't I? You I got the way, haven't I? I haven't. I've no. got the higher security guards. No, you don't. That's right. Oh, no, no, no. Why'd you hire security guards? I hired them because I think you might do something on my lawn. I'm not your worried about No, I'm not worried about you. You're worried about me. No, I'm not worried about you. Why did you hire you. security guards? I told you, I'm afraid you're going to do something on my lawn. Uh, I'm going to have a good crop on your lawn. I don't know if we're allowed to say that on television I, or allow it to be said. better bleep what he said. But this guy here, believe me, he is living in Windsor now. I don't know how this came and about. And he's turned on the people of Newfoundland. Yes, he, he has made it very, very clear now that he is no longer a, a Newfoundlander. Newfie. We'll be back with more after this wow. message. <laughs> American junior heavyweight champ, weighing in at 215 pounds from Detroit, Michigan, Chris Carter. His opponent from Cambridge, Ontario. The world's most highly educated and best dressed wrestling manager. Chris Carter is accompanied by the world's most highly educated and best dressed wrestling manager, Dr. Jerry Graham, Jr. His opponent from Cambridge, Ontario, weighing in at 212 pounds, Ron Davies. Well, Six matches on the program today, George, uh, and wrestling fans changed the schedule a little bit. Those early matches uh, were such quick decisions that uh, gave, us the opportunity, gave us the opportunity to present another match, something we're more than happy to do. What we should tell you is that uh, this is a 10-minute time limit match. After the interview on this match, we'll immediately go to our duration match, which will be a tag team affair, most falls to win. There you see the belt, the America's Junior Heavyweight Championship belt, possessed by Chris Carter, managed by the doctor, Jerry Graham Jr. Uh, the, the wrestling fans here in the studio today uh, serenading, let's say, Chris Carter with, chant, with a chant of traitor, traitor, and that refers to, uh, what is it, George Bellows? I think they were calling him traitor. No, he's a traitor, as in Benedict Arnold. Oh. And uh, that is a result of what? I guess it's a couple of months ago by now, isn't it? Uh, a month yes, ago, a couple yes. months ago where, where he double-crossed John Bonello and hooked himself up with the man outside the ring, the doctor, Jerry Graham, Jr. 
Say what you will, George. Uh, it certainly has altered the style of Chris Carter. He used to be a likable young fellow. He now wrestles uh, according to the doctor of the Jerry, of uh, the doctor Jerry Graham Jr. It's been successful for him, George. He's a champion. That's true. But he had won a tournament already when this happened. So he was a champion when all of this transpired. Well, there's Ron Davies laying in a couple of good solid forearm smashes in a corner. Fields Carter across the ring. Davies going after Chris Carter. But Carter belts him in the midsection and Neela puts Davies on the canvas. Picking Davies up. He's going to slam him. He does. Here comes Carter off the ropes. A flying elbow smash. Davies on the canvas. He's going to do it again. Dr. Jerry Graham Jr. shouting instructions to his protege from outside the ring as Carter lays Davies down across his knee. A backbreaker. Davies trying to fight back. Takes a side headlock on Chris Carter. Hip toss takes Carter over and down. Davies in control right now on the canvas with that side headlock. Carter with a nice move to extricate himself. Takes a head scissors. Davies kicks out. Both men up fairly slowly actually at the canvas. Carter with punches to the top of the head. There's something, George, we didn't used to see Chris Carter do, and that's punch. No, that's true. Chris, uh, when he wrestled uh, in the past, he wrestled. There was no punches, no kicks, no dirty tactics as he's accustomed to doing now. Well, he traded punches with Ron Davies, just scooped him up and like a sack of potatoes and slammed him on the canvas. Carter now on that second strand of rope. Oh, a flying knee drop from that second rope onto the shoulder of Ron Davies. Dr. Jerry Graham Jr. outside the ring with the shillelagh and other knee left puts Davies on the canvas. The doctor continuing to shout instructions from outside the ring. Davies comes back with a punch in the midsection. He tries, yes, he's got Carter in there and slams him. The fans enjoying that, I'll tell you. He's going to do it again. He's got Carter in there and slams him again. Covers the man. One, two, count of two only. Oh, the doctor's upset with his protege. Slaps his protege. Do you see that? Can you imagine this Carter taking that from that man? You must have a lot of admiration for Graham. I don't understand all this. Wow, there's a suplex. George, maybe that slap did something. It looked like it spurred Chris Carter on to further action. Count of two. Two minutes gone. We're going to get a time reading. Oh, a pile driver. Carter covers his opponent. One, two. Very vicious. Here's Dave Mariani wrestling fans to get this result. Championship caliber shows through at all times. Mr. Cannon and Mr. Ruskin. I am so proud. You still got it, baby. I am so proud of my man winning this belt. I'm so proud of being manager for the American Junior Heavyweight Champion. It just makes me warm inside. And I'm gonna tell you something. John Bonello. John Bonello wants this belt. But John Bonello has been having some problems. The last time I was on this show, we talked about my 844 consecutive wins. But after my last match with John Bonello, it's now 845 consecutive right, wins. Baby. Okay. And Bonello, as far as I'm concerned, has not yet earned a title shot with Chris Carter. Bonello, because... you better watch out, baby, because Dr. Jerry Graham has made me one lean, mean wrestling machine, baby. Absolutely Woo. correct. I'm the man of 1,005 holds. And I've taught him a thousand and four holes. Now one extra hole makes me a little you bit seen better that than Carter. Driver, didn't you, Mr. Cannon? You ever seen him use a pile driver before? No way, baby. You ever ever uh, seen him use a suplex before? I like the suplex. Will you shut I up like and let me get a word in edgewise of Ruskin? I'd like you, you to try it, boy. You've done nothing but jack your jaw since I've been out here. Now you're talking to the manager of the champion, the North American we still junior got it. heavyweight champion. That's right. Bonello. I just had a title defense. That's right. It's still here, baby. That's right. That actor told me what to do. He gave me the right prescription. And we did it, baby. Any human being. And here we are, number one. Any human being in the world, 215 pounds or less, is more than welcome 
to take a shot at this championship because that's what being a champion is all about. Don't argue with the peasants. Don't argue with... I said don't argue with the peasants. Let me talk. All right. You're not a traitor, Doc. I know that. You're not a traitor. Al Costello was a poor coach. I took you under my wing and made a champion out of you. And we have nothing more to say. We believe in you action, not words. words. After this message, stay with us. No, no message, George. We're going right up another way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final match it. of the program. We'll be calling our duration match. The team with the most falls at curfew time will be the winner. Hailing from Columbus, Georgia, Bubba Hawkins. His partner in this tag team match, hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Al Snow. Their opponents in this tag team match, hailing from Zion City, Illinois, 263 pounds, Ty Reverend Tiny Tim Hampton. His partner in this tag team match, hailing from Munich, Germany, weighing in at 266 pounds, Hans Mueller. Well, George, we'll get back. What is with this mask on Hans Mueller? I don't know. Mueller showed up the other night, <clears throat> excuse me, said he would not show his beautiful face to the fans any longer. Everybody knows it's Mueller. Yeah, he, well, he came into Cobo Arena the last show with the, with the mask on right. and grabbed the microphone and, and started talking. I mean, he's not hiding his identity. I just don't understand why he's wearing that, that mask. Oh, well. No, what, I, what I was laughing at before was that the Reverend Tiny Tim Hampton, who is now known as the Reverend Timothy Hampton, excuse me, used to wrestle under the name of Trader Tim Hampton. Trader? Trader, T-R-A-D-E-R, uh -huh. like Trader Horn. Right. As Chris Carter is walking to the ring, fans are yelling Trader, and Tim thinks they're calling him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Hampton's got Ben Hawkins in the corner. I guess the, the Reverend's hungry today, George. I'll tell you, the Reverend can be a very mean person. Well, well, I can see that because he just rammed Ben Hawkins' head into his partner's boot in the corner. Have you seen where he announces himself from? Zion? No, Valhalla. Valhalla, right. Well, there's the masked Hans Muller in there. Wrestling Ben Hawkins. We'll try and get an update on uh, how much time is remaining in this duration match. It is most balls to win before curfew. Hawkins with a good wrist lock on the big German ruler. George, I know that the wrestling fans in Newfoundland would like to see a resolution of the hostilities between Newfie Power, the pride of. Spaniards Bay, Hartford Love, and the man that's in the ring right now, the, the masked German Hans Müller. Yes, uh, we had a lot of mail, out of mail yes. Newfoundland that, uh, regarding the Newfoundland and Labrador Heavyweight Championship. Uh, what is the status of that belt currently, George? Well, of course, uh, Müller uh, took the belt back from Hartford Love, and then the belt was converted back to the Canadian Championship. And uh, then Mueller lost it to Greg Wojcikowski. Okay. Now, Greg is the current Canadian heavyweight uh, wrestling champion, but uh, the uh, Newfoundland and Labrador title is still up for grabs. As a matter of fact, the belt is still... Uh, it's, it's not owned by anybody at the present time, but it's it being held up. And well, uh, is it going to come back into play, George, or...? Uh, I'd like to see that, but it'll say again it would depend on the fans. If the fans in Labrador and Newfoundland would like to see uh, possibly a heart for love and Hans Müller going for that belt once again, uh, that would be an interesting match. The person that I would like to see down in Newfoundland would be Bobo Brazil. Well, we've got news for the wrestling fans. The man who is no longer from Newfoundland. Yes, King Moondog. There are 10 minutes remaining, by the way, in this duration match. He is going to be visiting his homeland this summer. And I agree with you, George. I think that the man to take care of King Moondog is the United States heavyweight champion, the great Bobo Brazil. Of course, uh, Sailor White from St. John's Newfoundland is now 
King Moondog from Windsor, Ontario. Well, he said Windsor. I don't really know. I have heard that uh, I have heard that he's living in Windsor now, or at least he's around this area because he has been driving up and down my street. Well, there it is, the first fall in this duration match. The Reverend Tim Hampton scores it. Here's Dave Mariani. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the first fall, the team of Tiny Tim Hampton and Hans Mueller. Well, that was a very, very vicious punch to the throat by the Reverend, George. And Al Snow uh, reeling from the effects of that. There's the bell again. It's going to be Al Snow starting in there against the Reverend Tim Hampton. One fall to none for the team of Hampton and Mueller. There's the Reverend Tim Hampton locking up in the referee's position with Al Snow. Side headlock taken by Al Snow. Snow trying to pour on the pressure. Talk about trial by fire. Snow's in the midst of it right now. Hip toss, takes the Reverend down. The Reverend breaks that hold. He's got the head scissors locked on Al Snow. Referee Cash went over to check on the fact of whether or not it's a choke. I believe it's not. Good kick out by Al Snow. George, he still has to be reeling and feeling the effects of that uh, punch to the throat that was laid on him by the Reverend prior to the pin. Well, there's the tag now. Ben Hawkins coming into the ring. Don't know whether it's going to be the Reverend or his partner, the German, Hans Müller. Hawkins now locks up with the Reverend, takes a front face lock. A go behind, nice go behind by Hawkins. He tried to take the man down, but the Reverend showing ring savvy. Made it to the ropes, got a foot outside, and referee Cashman called for the, ref the wrestlers to break. Hawkins moved back quickly as a gentleman. There's the tag. There's the tag, and here comes Hans Müller. Hawkins back over the ropes. Headbutt to the midsection by Müller. Backs Hawkins up against the ropes again. Headbutts him again. George, does he have something in the mask? Well, that's quite possible. Uh, maybe that's the reason why Müller is wearing the mask, is that he might be putting some kind of an implement in the well, top of the mask. That's right. Seven minutes remaining in this duration match. That's the way I would say the thing, George. Uh, but, I mean, there's no reason for him to wear the mask. No, because he certainly isn't that beautiful. No, as, as of course, the opposite may well be true. But uh, he's not hes not even attempting to fool anyone about his identity. No, I don't think that's his purpose. Nice move by Hawkins in a cover. Count of one only. Well, he's making no attempt really to conceal his identity, George. He has to be wearing the mask for some reason. Maybe the concealment of a foreign object uh, is the reason. Well, I think at some point or other we'll find out. Yeah, the uh, Coco Blanks will headbutt somebody, and it has a very telling effect. Uh, I'm sure they'll let us know. Well, Mueller is showing us some uh, good wrestling moves here, George, in this match. Uh, showing us really that he does possess, with six minutes remaining, some uh, knowledge, technical knowledge of the finer aspects of the scientific game of wrestling. Well, I think that 90% uh, of the wrestlers, if it came down to that they uh, had to wrestle, did, because this is the name of the game, is wrestling. That's right. A couple of good tackles by uh, Ben Hawkins puts Mueller on the canvas. Well, the mark of inexperience, George, and a little bit of immaturity, he tried to do it a third time. Mueller moved to the side and laid a knee into the midsection of Hawkins as he went by and uh, backs him up now with a front face lock, tags off with the Reverend Tim Hampton. Going to have a hold off to Hampton and showing really his, his ring experience is uh, a little greater than his Ben Hawkins because Hawkins, if he were with more experience, George, wouldn't try the exact same maneuver three times in a row on a top caliber wrestler as he is. Well, I know especially in the beginnings that uh, it's kind of difficult to, you have to work instinctively and uh, you, you don't count, you don't say, hey, this is my third or fourth. A lot of times the inexperienced wrestler or the beginners will, will be successful, something will continue to do it until and overdo it. they stop and overdo it, right. Good, uh, good forearm uppercut by uh, Hans Müller that time. 
What's he going to use now? Well, what I couldn't see, but it almost looked to me, George, like maybe he might have used the thumb to throw to Ben Hawkins. There's the tag. Al Snow into the ring now. Two men circling each other, locking up in the referee's position. Mueller back into the corner. Whoa, a solid, another solid four on. A third one laid in by Snow. Need in the midsection now. Feels him across the ring. Well, Mueller back with that headbutt, George, and I don't know, those headbutts in the midsection seem to be having effect on, on both Hawkins and Snow. Maybe he does have something. I don't know. We'll have to find out, that's for sure. Four minutes left. Oh, a beautiful suplex by Mueller, and he applied that one properly. Didn't use the trunks. Got hit Snow by the hair. Lays a big forearm smash to the back of Snow's neck. There's Mueller from the second strand of rope. Down with a punch, puts Snow on the canvas. Picks him up by the trunks, rolls him over. One, two, count of three goes in. There it is, the second fall for the team of Hampton and Mueller. Here's Dave Mariani. Ladies and gentlemen, the wrestling ball team of Reverend Tiny Tim Hampton and Hans Mueller. Well, we'll, we'll let... No, it's... it's no, gentlemen, we still have some time remaining. It's a duration match. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's still, there's still a few minutes remaining. Don't worry about it. Job trainer, Tim. Well, Mueller told me not to worry about it. Poor Al. Oh. Yeah, three minutes remaining, referee. Well, it's gonna. It's supposed to be snow and, and whoa, Hawkins just tried for a drop kick and missed it. It's supposed to be Snow and Mueller because they finished the last match for the last ball. <laughs> Hawkins now out of the ring. Snow still on the canvas. Mueller with a flying elbow smash to the small of uh, Al Snow's back. And there's about two minutes, I would guesstimate, remaining in this match. Snow just had his eyes raked by the, the, the garment, the knee of uh, Reverend Hampton's outfit. Come on, Bobo! Well, I don't know what to say, George. It's supposed to be Snow and, and, and Mueller, but it's, it's Hampton. I guess, ring the bell, we'll get this underway. That's starting it. No, no, that's... No, that's the start of it, Wayne. It's the start of it. It didn't bring the six the start of this fall. <laughs> Referee Cashman didn't signal for the start of the bell. The match had never officially restarted, so when the bell rang, the referee thought it was the end of the match. George, I think it's a little out of control right now up in the ring. What do you think? I think the referee looks like he's in a stupor. One minute, 30 seconds remaining in this match, I believe. It was in a minute 30. Minute and a half, a little less than a minute and a half remaining in this duration match. Now it's the two guys in the ring who were supposed to start this fall, and that's Mueller and Snow. And Mueller with a, with a toehold. Oh, a good move by Snow to kick him off. George, I don't think it's a matter at this stage anymore. No longer in doubt. One minute remaining. It's two to nothing for the team of Mueller and Hampton. They are the stronger match. Certainly no doubt they're going to win. The only question is, will it be two nothing? Will it be two one? Will it be three nothing? I think personally that uh, I don't think that the team of Snow and uh, Hawkins really has the time left to soften either of these individuals up enough to score a fall in, in the short time remaining in this match. Hawkins started the move, but uh, Mueller made it to the rope, stepped outside, referee Cashman called for the break, and there were 30 seconds left in this match. Wow, there's been a lot of action today, George. You've seen John Bonello, you've seen the great Bobo Brazil, the U.S. heavyweight champion. You've seen the cool cat, Billy Jackson, the soul man. Ten seconds. We're into the countdown now. Less than ten seconds. Three seconds remaining. It's going to be 2 nothing for the team of Mueller and Hampton. There's the bell. This duration match is over. Here's Dave Mariani to give us the official results. Ladies and gentlemen, the duration match is all over. The winner of the team of Tiny Tim Hampton and Hans Mueller. Coming over to the table now, of course, is the Reverend Timothy Hampton, also known as Tiny Tim, and his uh, associate and partner in crime, Let Hans me tell Mueller. you something. The Reverend, the Reverend had a fine people. 
Save you! Bill Hatch, come. Sit down, sit down. I'm going to tell you something. This is for Ego, Bobo, and Jackson. The cool Jackson you got running around here. That's what they're going to get. The same thing. Well, one question I have in particular, and this is directed at Hans Muller, is why you're wearing the mask, Muller. And let me throw a little something out at you. You're having some kind of an implement in your hand while you wrestle and you put it into your mask. Is no! It never! You have never said any of those Shannon! Never! I bought a mask for one reason. These idiotic people here do not appreciate a true champion, so we do not need to see a true, true champion's face. Amen, brother. I don't think that's true. I think that you're wearing a mask so that you can put something in there. When the time comes, if I see you headbutt somebody and they go down, I'll know it's because you put something in your mask to do that. Oh, no, no. Mueller. The other oh, thing no. that you've got to know is the man I defeated is defeated. You wear a glove in the ring. Case. You throw a heart punch now. Now it's the mask, and you're putting implements inside of your mask. What are you going to come up with next? What do you need next? I need two Nothing. things. Nothing. I need the United States title, the Canadian championship, which I built, become very soon, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, never! How about you and the Reverend here teaming up and we'll put you in with two very capable opponents. Next Cobo Arena show and see what you can do. I don't care who you put up against. You put it up in there. We'll show you what you're going to do. I'm going to baptize whoever you put it in there. You're going to baptize them. There you have it. Reverend's going to baptize them. We'll be back after this. Well, wrestling fans, as usual, action, thrills, chills, spills, and excitement here on Superstars of Wrestling. We open the program. John Bonello with a beautiful flying tackle won the opening match. We saw the United States heavyweight champion, the great Bobo Brazil, win his match with the Coco Bonk and Top Spread. We heard some great music in the next match. The soul man, the cool cat, Billy Jackson, came out with his brand new radio, bought for him by the kids in the project where he grew up. King Moondog with a giant splash from the second rope, and George... He continues to use that hole. He's going to hurt somebody. <laughs> Defeated Chris Jones. We had uh, another match in. Chris Carter, the uh, America's junior heavyweight champion, accompanied by his manager, the doctor, Jerry Graham Jr., won his match with the very vicious hole, the pile driver, and the team of Hans Muller and the Reverend Timothy Hampton won the duration match. Two falls to none. George, it's been a lot of action and excitement. What do you think? Well, so much action and so much excitement that we had to put on another match today. That's right. And I'll tell you something. One of the things I'm excited about looking forward to the next match matches at Cobo Arena, George, your return to the the ring in the striped shirt this time but i'll tell you something that ought to be a heck of a match george cannon in the center of the ring between bobo brazil and king moon dog sailor white i'm not looking forward to that very much like i said i didn't want to get into the ring when bobo said he would never come back to detroit well that's a worthwhile no. reason isn't it george <laughs> into the ring i'll tell you something wrestling fans we'll see you next week here on superstars of wrestling until then i'm milton ruskin george cannon see you next